Now, before we get into the specifics of the different types of contents that we can put onto a reel, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about the overall presentation of our reel. And all of this will apply to the presentation on our site as well, the overall presentation of our work. Really, the presentation itself doesn't have to be uh, spectacular, but poor presentation can really hurt your chances of getting a job because it says a lot about your design choices. And in the end, we are designers. So there's just some general rules that we can hit upon. Then we'll take a look at general presentation and then we'll get into content for specific roles. A general rule that we want to always apply, particularly for animation and VFX work, is that quality is much more important than quantity. Companies are selling what is essentially a high quality luxury product. It costs a lot of money to produce and really they're selling quality. They're selling you as an artist and saying that you are incredibly high quality in whatever role that you're in. So quality is much more important than quantity. 30 seconds of quality work is much better than two minutes of rubbish, right? And the problem that you have starting out is that you will always feel like you don't have enough work. If you're strategic in the quality of the work that you display, the quantity will make no difference at all. So we don't want to put in filler of any kind. The work itself is more important than the reel. So when we're talking about presentation, we're not trying to make a lot of work for ourselves. We're trying to make the presentation as simple and as classy as possible. For the vast majority of jobs you'll be applying for, you won't be an editor, you won't be a graphic designer, you won't be a motion designer. So the work is more important than the reel. And we need to keep this in mind because we don't want to take a lot of time uh, presenting the reel or presenting the portfolio and trying to do snazzy stuff in and around that. We want to keep the presentation for our online presence and for our reel. We want it to be simple and classy. We don't really want to notice it. The work itself, be it modeling or animation, rigging, etc., is is really what you're selling. So that's where we want to spend our time. And overall, when we're thinking about, uh, about the feel, we wanted to do what any good trailer does. So, so we want to leave them wanting more. And again, this goes back to quality over quantity. Show your very, very best and let them want for more to get you into the company. And once you're in, then you'll be able to show your, your wonderful personality and skill sets on site. And you'll have the job all tied up. So in general, we want to keep it shorter, not longer. And there are some general rules for how we want to go about laying out our content. So really, we want to put the best work first, and that's that's quite important. We want to try and make the, the biggest impact we can uh, in the shortest amount of time. So really, your very best work needs to pop up within the first kind of five to ten seconds. There's a lot of uh, applicants for particular roles, and you need to go from the big pile of 100 into the small pile of 10. Let's get these people in for an interview. So your best work needs to go first. Your great work is going to go in the middle and then you want to end on uh, more best work. You want to end on a high, right? So anything less than your best really shouldn't be on your reel. The companies are paying you for professional quality. Now, as a student, you may not have reached that at all levels, but they want to see the potential at the highest level that they possibly can. So there's some general rules on how we want to lay out our kind of one minute demo reel. And I would say, particularly for the demo reel, it will be closer to one minute than two minutes. You simply won't have enough high quality work to fill two minutes. Uh, often I see professional reels and they don't have two minutes of high quality work. So you won't have it either. You can see here in the graphic that the first 30 seconds are vitally important. After 30 seconds, if I haven't seen something that can fulfill my problem, i.e. fulfill my job role that I'm advertising, you know, I'll stop watching, I'll, I'll dump it and I'll move on to the next one. So really that first 30 seconds is quite important. The very first thing in our presentation is going to be a title slate. Uh, and that's what you're going to end on as well. So our title slate, really what's important here is that they get your name right at the start. Uh, if you're going for a particular role, you might have that on the title slate. So you could have Richard Gavin Modeler or Richard Gavin FX Artist. Now the real, that would be for a specific reel rather than for a generalist reel. So the content will need to fit that job description. Yeah, you would include an email address, potentially a contact number, and you would have that at the start and you will have that at the end. Yeah, if you're working on larger projects, it is expected that you do some kind of breakdown uh, just to say what specific role you filled on that larger project. That would be the same for student work. If it was a group project, you will need to state what you did within that shot. And that can be done in a, a shop breakdown, which is a piece of paper that you would include with your 
uh, your CV and your cover letter. Now, I'm not in favor of that. Uh, I think that it's a better idea to credit within the demo reel. And that can be done in, in various different ways within the demo reel. And we'll look at that in a second. So the title slate should be uh, short and sweet. It doesn't need to be overly snazzy. Uh, it just needs to get the information across and it needs to happen fairly quickly. Uh, the first 30 seconds are vital to the impression that you're going to make and your ability to communicate things well and quickly is part of what you're going to get paid for. Uh, so if we take a look at two different reels here, and I don't know either of these people, they're not uh, students of mine, but this is an example of a pretty poor intro to a demo reel and a pretty good intro to a demo reel. On the left here, we have someone who has decided to put together a little bit of a motion graphics piece to start off their modeling reel. Now, if I was hiring them as a modeler, I couldn't really care less about their motion graphics. Where this hurts this person is the motion graphics are poor. The composition is poor. The timing overall is poor. Uh, and more importantly than that, it's 13 seconds long. I have watched this for 13 seconds and there is nothing that I can hire this person for so far. And that's it. Next, gone. So on the right hand side, we have a pretty nice intro to a demo reel. It introduces the name first, quickly moves on to quite an impressive render, telling us what software was used. It's a personal project. And then we go from a model, true to the wireframe, true to the texture and true to the groom. So within 13 seconds, this person has given me their name, some of the software skills they have. Uh, and they've shown me that they understand that topology is important. They've shown me that they're able to texture. They've shown me that they're able to groom. I know they use Maya, Yeti, and Nuke. Uh, I can see they've used the HGRI up in the top right hand corner and they have some understanding of trying to balance up the colors using a gray bowl. The lighting on it is quite acceptable. The model is quite nice. The textures are quite good. The groom is quite good. So within the same 13 seconds, this is someone who's gone from the from the huge pile of 100 demo reels I have to go through into the top 10 that I'm going to look at uh, for calling for an interview. Now, this isn't so much about the quality of the content, even though the quality of the content on the right hand side is quite nice. It's really just looking at this idea of the presentation, the amount of information you want to get across to me. I'm busy. I've got a role to fill. That means we're hiring people. Why? Because we're busy. I don't have 13 seconds of my day to waste on your not brilliant motion graphics. I have 13 seconds of my day to waste on trying to find someone who can model, who can texture, who can do a groom for me. Yeah. So we need to ask this question all the time. What is it the employer is looking for? They're looking to fulfill a role. And this is what we're trying to get across in our demo reel, that I can fulfill this role for you. The person on the right hand side has done this person on the left hand side has not and that's just the title slate into the first 10 to 15 seconds nothing to do with the content so much as the presentation overall and the information that we're trying to communicate other information that we can try and look to communicate within our presentation uh, includes things such as the specific role you might have done on a shot the title of a project the software skills that you used poly count particularly important for games texture sheets if you're going for a texturing role uh, name, contact details could also be displayed. Uh, you could have a shot breakdown saying specifically what you've did within a shot. This is generally expected. You might also do a breakdown where you wipe between different layers of a shot as it builds up. Now the presentation and the layout should be consistent across all of the shots. So if you're going to do this, it needs to be the same across all of the shots. It should be simple and classy. You're trying to get across some information to me. I should notice it only if I want to notice it. My eyes should really be focused on the main content that you're trying to get across, be it modeling or texturing or animating or whatever the role is. I feel this is a better way to do it instead of having titles in between each shot, uh, slowing down the flow of the overall reel or having a big long credit list at the end or having a breakdown sheet that you have to attach to your CV and your cover letter. It's right there in the shot. I can see the context straight away. Um, if you are going to include music on it, you need to choose music that's appropriate. Uh, so it should be tonally appropriate. And that means middle of the road, not irritating, not your specific style of music. Choose something that is fairly pedestrian. Now, it, thematically, it should probably be a little bit upbeat and lively. Uh, and it should work with your overall pacing. Now, keep in mind, most studios will kill the audio. 
uh, and most leads if they're at their desk would be listening to their own music they won't be listening to yours it shouldn't be vitally important unless you're doing some animation with some lip sync in it uh, it's completely plausible to cut a demo reel without music on it at all music can be quite useful for pacing uh, for pacing out your edit and music can be a consideration if you want to try and generate views up on youtube it is important to consider whether you can use the copyright of this particular music uh, there is quite a lot of music sites out there that offer free music or music under the creative commons license uh, some of which i've listed here within the slide on the right hand side and i've listed a link down at the bottom which will take you to a creative commons page that discusses the different types of commercial commons licenses that are available uh, whether it says it in the license or not it is generally a good idea to credit the music to the composer demo reels are particularly important for showing off motion uh, this makes reels particularly important for highlighting animation, rigging, effects, compositing, previs, anything that has motion as a key component. We can also use movement to create engagement for our viewers. So we want to avoid just showing still images uh, if possible. That can become pretty boring pretty quickly. So for still images or high quality still renders of models, you could consider using movement such as panning or zooming to make the images more engaging uh, and to make sure that someone doesn't get bored while watching your reel. For models, generally we can try and use turntables to show off the models. This helps to highlight the volume and form of the models. Uh, where possible, we want to try and mix it up a bit. So if you have particular details that you want to show in close up, that's a good idea to cut to those uh, to highlight particular skill sets that you want to show off or particularly nice bits of modeling. Now, once we have some movement and motion in our reel, we need to consider pacing overall. Now, unless you're going for an editing job, you don't need to painstakingly edit every single second of the reel. It just needs to keep flowing, it needs to keep pace. And often it is useful to cut it to music, even if they're not going to listen to the music, as that will dictate the pace and the flow of each shot. We want to consider cinematic camera language. Now, this is a, a big subject, it, but in general, we want to not notice the actual camera movement. And that's why we want to try and avoid things like fly-throughs and things like that, wh which we aren't really able to achieve in the real world. We, we want to not notice the camera, so, so we don't want to do anything snazzy there. And that's why it's generally a good idea to potentially lock off the camera. Now, locking off the camera allows for easy wipes if you want to do uh, a breakdown, like a lighting breakdown or something like that or you want to wipe between uh, the wireframe and the smooth shaded version of a model, for example. So that makes it very easy to do that and kind of takes care of some of the editing for us. It is important that the reel moves along at pace and there's a flow to the reel. You want to leave a shot on just long enough for me to get the information, but not so long that I get bored of looking at it. And this is where we need to be a little bit careful with uh, too many breakdown wipes or too many uh, 360 degree turntables. It's fine to do this for the, the top shot, for the, the best of the shots, but you don't need to do it for every single shot. It gets boring very quickly. Where we can, we can try and be more creative. We can show close-ups and uh, we can show models in poses and things like that. Now, no talk about demo reels would be complete without showing uh, some of the classics of the genre and Collins Bear animation is definitely one of those. So you can take a look at that up on the slides. Uh, it's, it's very short and it's uh, quite enjoyable, it's quite funny. Uh, it is also not the kind of reel that is going to get you a job and Colin is clearly not overly pleased with his educational career. However, it does show one thing that Colin has very good pacing. He's got quite good timing overall, which is what makes it work so well. So pacing is important and if we're not comfortable with pacing, generally we can stick to the rule of shorter is probably better than longer and the overall length of our reel should be shorter, not longer. Uh, so that was some key things to think about the presentation of our demo reel. Now most of that can also be applied when, to our online presence. We want to generally keep the presentation simple, classy and consistent. It should not in any way detract from the overall content. Poor presentation and poor design choices uh, around how we display our reel brings up questions about our ability as designers. So we definitely want to avoid that. Really, all the focus should be on the content for the particular role that we're applying for, be it modeling, rigging, animation, etc. The presentation can be informative. We can use the presentation in subtle ways to highlight particular skill sets with software or our understanding of particular techniques. The edit overall should be short and snappy, so the overall length should be short. In general, we don't want to dwell on shots, though we want to hold a little bit longer on our best work uh, to highlight specific skill sets. 
but overall it should be short and snappy people are busy they want to see your very best work and they want to see it quickly the camera work should be simple it should highlight the content a little bit like the overall presentation we want it simple and consistent i want to be looking at your models or your animation in general i'm not going to be hiring you for your camera work unless you're going for a job in the layout department excellent camera work is difficult where we can we're going to keep it as simple as possible and consistent throughout our reel now that can seem like quite a few things to weigh up but the presentation of our reel should not be taking a huge amount of time in general we want to keep to the rule of keep it simple and quick if you have spare time or you want to put in more time it should be going towards improving the content as much as possible i'm not hiring you to make demo reels i'm hiring you for a particular skill set where you want to spend time in and around the presentation spend less time keep it simple classy and consistent the presentation does take some thinking about beforehand you will most likely need to redo some play blasts or redo some renders to suit the reel now that we've told a little bit about the presentation of our reel which is really the the structure the framework of our reel we can now discuss some of the hints and tips for content for different kinds of roles that you might be applying for in the next video